On April 25th, 2015, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck Nepal, killing more than 8,000 people and displacing millions. During and immediately following the strong shaking, nearly 20,000 landslides occurred in the steep mountainous terrain of the Himalaya. These landslides resulted in immediate casualties, and they continue to be one of the lasting threats generated by this earthquake. Bare slopes that were exposed by landsliding during the earthquake failed again in deadly debris flow during the rainy monsoon season just this past summer. These slopes will remain vulnerable for years to come. In this video, some of the co-seismic and monsoon-induced landslide features that were observed as a part of a landslide investigation expedition in October 2015 are presented. The investigation team made use of drone technology to better understand the landslide mechanisms and selected footage from these drones is presented. This picturesque view of a landslide adjacent to a natural waterfall attracted our attention. From the ground, the feature appeared to be a rock slide on what was practically a vertical cliff. So we sent the drone up to view the top of the slide, which was out of our view from the bottom of the slope. And from the drone images, we could better understand this feature. And ultimately, we determined that a developed terrace had failed. The soil mass had slumped and fell off the cliff, possibly causing some additional raveling or stripping of the vertical cliff. Over a dozen landslides were generated during the earthquake in the steep hillsides that surround the village of Timbu. During this year's monsoon season, three separate storm events generated violent debris flows from these exposed landslide scars. Debris flows are fluidized mixtures of water and sediment that have the consistency of wet concrete. They can exceed speeds of over 100 miles per hour while traveling downstream. Debris flow in the Timbu Valley carry car-sized boulders downstream, along with enough sediment to temporarily block the main river channel, the Malamchikola. This blocking is called a landslide dam, and can cause risk of flooding downstream if the dam persists for long periods and is suddenly breached. Fortunately, the dams that were created here this summer persisted only for minutes, rather than days to weeks, which would have created hazardous flooding potential. Recognizing these potential flooding scenarios is important from a hazards perspective because landslide dams can be engineered with spillways that prevent catastrophic breach and flooding downstream. Drone footage will be used to aid researchers in determining the exact sizes of the boulders carried downstream during the debris flow events. This information, along with chemical analysis of the sediment and stream water, aid researchers in understanding how earthquakes cause periods of intense erosion that can persist for decades. Sites off to the distance, where light-colored slopes are visible, are areas of dense landsliding that occurred in the northern part of the country, deep within the highest and steepest terrain of the Himalaya. Steeper slopes are one reason that more landslides have occurred here, but researchers also think that the details of fault movement beneath this area could have contributed to more intense shaking here than felt elsewhere in Nepal. 
Stronger shaking in this region would explain the higher number of observed landslides. Because this region lacked instruments to measure strong ground motion, the kind that are common in more developed countries, the landslides may be our best clue to understanding the intensity of shaking at the Earth's surface during this earthquake. Intense rockfall during the earthquake destroyed much of the Malamshikola water supply plant. Fortunately, most of the workers at this plant were on site near the river during the earthquake and escaped the heavy damage to the buildings and cars, which were located nearest the rock slope. One fatality was reported at this site from a group of undergraduate students visiting the plant from the capital city of Kathmandu. Images taken from the drone, from various angles, will be used to build a highly detailed model surface of the landslide. We'll use this model to better understand how landslides form during earthquakes and the volumes of sediment that they deliver to nearby river channels. Details of the rock face that can be seen in the footage will also be used to understand the mechanical characteristics of the rocks that failed during landsliding. Understanding these material properties are key to building better predictions of landslide hazards in the future. For example, this type of intensely fractured rock would increase the likelihood of a landslide and would produce rock fragments that are easily transported by rivers. Abundant rockfall across this steep hillside is testament to the ready delivery of sediment to nearby rivers. From this earthquake, researchers hope to learn how quickly and how much sediment is transported to rivers by earthquake-generated landslides. If sediment volumes are large enough, and transport is relatively quick, it would suggest that earthquakes play an important role in shaping the landscape. This is a new concept that is currently being tested by the scientific community one that has emerged from studies of earthquake-induced landslides over the past several years. In proving this concept, the data collected by the drones is truly unique and invaluable.